All right, now let's take a look at what intuition is all about. Understanding intuition and what is it? Well, first of all, the word intuition comes from the Latin word intura, which means to know from within or form of inner teaching. So it's a type of knowing that is not dependent on logic and reason, nor observation. Okay? It's a way of knowing where we don't really know how it is that we know, but we just know we know. <laughs> the way I like to define it is that it's a type of body wisdom that comes through our connection to the energetic matrix of the universe at large. The sort of cosmic intelligence that is the source of all reality that exists as an energetic level, right? And we then can pick up that energy of things. The energy of things that might lie in the future, the energy about places, people, events. We can pick up that energy through our bodies. And that energy gets kind of translated into particular sensations and feelings, sometimes pictures and images, words, messages, we may see the words or hear the words, and even just ideas like inspirations, thoughts coming into our mind. And so this is where intuition has always been associated with spirituality, primarily because intuition is connecting with and addressing the unseen aspect of reality, the non-obvious, that which is hidden to us. Right, that we just don't get through the usual five senses. And so we then often refer to this as the metaphysical, that which goes beyond the physical. So basically intuition is then what allows us to tune in to this deeper level of reality, where things tend to be shifting at an energetic level before they actually manifest physically. Is that aspect of reality that is a little bit you know, ahead of time, beyond time and space, and therefore um, is beyond the usual time-space limitations. This is where we can tune into what's about to happen, but also where we can kind of tune in and manifest what's going to happen, shift reality at that level. That's where the fun is. Now, a really useful model that I like to work with in understanding reality it involves um, seeing it as sort of consisting of four levels. I got this idea from Serge King. He's a, Hun a Hawaiian shaman working with the Hawaiian Huna tradition, which is sort of the Hawaiian native uh, shamanic tradition. And apparently, he says that in that tradition, they see reality as existing as four levels. There is, first of all, the ordinary level of reality, right? where we see the world out there in an objective way as existing as separate and distinct material things. This is sort of the ordinary world that we, you know, we're sort of accustomed to. And in the modern West, this is sort of the reality that we think alone exists. And the only way of looking at the world right, is as objective, separate material things. But there are other levels. There is the psychic reality of things, where everything exists as a form of energy. So, for example, if you would imagine sort of like, you know, a field with some trees and rocks and flowers and birds and squirrels running around, you know, you can just look at it as this material, physical world of different things, right? But on an energetic level, in terms of psychic reality, you could kind of see the aura around the different flowers, the aura around the birds, right? the squirrel running through. And then you can see the interaction of the energy between the bee that comes to visit the flower. And it's a bit of a dance of energy that takes place, energy, energetic kind of uh, interactions that are taking place. That's the psychic level of reality, where we can see this more subtle level of how things are existing and interacting on an energetic level. Then there's the third level of reality, where it exists as a dream. Right? This is sort of the dream world, where everything really consists of patterns of meaning. 
and there's certain patterns of how the birds fly, of how the wind is blowing through the grass, the pattern of the timing of things, of just the flight of the birds in such a pattern that kind of would resonate with what's maybe going on in your mind as the observer. So it's a world of patterns of meaning where things become symbols that carry messages, that there are signs in how the patterning of events that show up. Right? So this is sort of the dream level of reality where it's full of meaningful patterns. Then, and this is where synchronicities happen. All right, this is where we can see meaningful patterns of events, coincidences that line up, that have messages. Then there's the fourth level of reality, the, what he calls the holistic world, where at this level you see everything as one. It's one interconnected whole. It's a manifestation of just one being in a dance through diversity but it's all fundamentally interconnected into one whole, the level of oneness. Now, those are the four levels of reality. Now, the thing is, is that we create a lot of confusion for ourselves through a form of reductionism. When we fail to recognize the validity of all four levels of reality, that they all have their place, right they all have their place and what often happens is we're like sort of the you know the story of the four blind men and the elephant where one person will feel the leg of the elephant and say oh this is the trunk of a tree another person will feel the trunk of the elephant and say oh this is a snake another one will feel the tail and say oh this is a broom and another one the stomach uh, side of the elephant and say this is the wall of a house <laughs> What happens is when we look at one level of reality and then we absolutize it and say that it is not just uh, a part of reality, we make it the whole of reality. We absolutize that one level as being the truth and we neglect all the other levels. All right. And this is where we get confused. This is where we mess things up. So a classic example that we run into all the time is at the level of oneness, we will say that ah, the self is an illusion. Death is an illusion. Pain is an illusion. They really don't exist. All there is is the one. <laughs> I'm sure you've heard of that. Then on the other hand, at the other level of reality, at the objective world, you know, the atheist, uh, the scientist who's sort of out of date scientist in my mind, will kind of say, oh, you know, there is no soul, there is no God, there is no reality to dreams and, and uh, psychic type of phenomena do not exist. The, the only reality that exists is what I can perceive and interact with through the five senses in a material way. All right. So so you get this polarization of the mystic on the one hand who experiences and sees the world in terms of oneness and then you know the atheist and outdated scientist I have to say on the other hand who just simply dismisses the whole arena that's associated with spirituality the unseen world All right the world of energy of meaning of messages and even of oneness interconnectedness we need to recognize that there's validity to all of these levels. They're just different perspectives, all right? Different perspectives that are emphasizing different features and qualities. And, um, and, and again, we need to know what level we're addressing, all right? So that's a really useful model to keep in mind here. So that with intuition, we're addressing largely the level of the psychic and the dream worlds. All right, the levels of energies and of messages, as well as aspects of oneness. All right, the whole. Okay. Now, the second model I want to bring in here that's also extremely important deals more with us as the self. Right. The other model deals with the world out there. How do we perceive reality? Now we need to take a look at the self. How is it that we go about knowing things? How do I as a self relate to the world around me? 
And here is a model that I found very useful that I've gotten from Arthur Dykeman, a psychiatrist, who says that we basically have two modes of perception or two modes of consciousness. There is the objective mode of consciousness, sort of associated more with the logical, analytical mind. And then there is what he calls the receptive mode of consciousness, or what we could use here and refer to as the intuitive mind. Now let's just take a little look at these. The logical mind is often what we can associate with the left brain hemisphere. Right? It's sort of the analytical, logical, verbal side of us that sees things in a linear fashion of A, B, C, D lined up in parts where A is not B and B is not A. They're kind of in a sequence, a linear sequence. We can see things in terms of mathematics, okay, and mathematical formulas, all right? And we look at the parts of things, that which is obvious, that which is measurable, tangible, concrete, and we can kind of dissect into parts and work with them, right? And, and this sort of objective mode of consciousness associated with the left brain hemisphere, it sort of in, 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 um, represents the doing part of us where we kind of see the world out there as objects that we can do stuff with, right? And then we can talk about it. We can tell about it, right? We put it into words, mathematical formulas, logical kind of, um, uh, yeah, what? F yeah, not formulas, but little equations and whatnot, right? That's sort of the logical mind at work here. So, and it's very much tied in with us as doers out there, um, interacting with a world of objects. Then there is the intuitive mind and uh, or what he calls the receptive mode of consciousness. This is associated more with the right brain hemisphere which is that part of us that is imaginative, poetic, musical, associated with feelings, you know, kind of feels things and always sees the whole, has more of a holistic perspective and sees how the parts relate to the whole in patterns and meaning, right? And tries to, and therefore it works a lot with symbolism, which deals with patterns of meaning, right? And putting that into forms of poetry and art. And this is that part of us that feels the world around us. Instead of just seeing it, we kind of feel it, right? And then we try to put that, in, in not so much in words, in terms of talking about it, but expressing it through art, showing it, putting it in picture form, putting it in music form, turning it into a form of experience, all right? That people then can participate in and feel and enter into. And this is the being part of us, right? And so, you know, just imagine um, uh, going into a, a really quick way of getting a taste of this is through, you know, your eyes. Now, just look at one thing in particular. Focus in on a particular part, a particular object in front of you. Right? right there, you're in the objective mode when you're looking at the part of something, a very specific object in front of you then you shift into receptive mode when you come into a diffused place of awareness where you want to um, activate your peripheral vision and you want to see the whole of the room about you. You're not focusing on any one thing but you're wanting to see the whole. Um, you're wanting to see all that is around you all at once somehow. Okay, just shifting your, again, your visual a focus from particular object to diffused peripheral vision. Right then and there, that's giving you a bit of a taste of what it is involved in being in the receptive mode. You're now going into wanting to feel the world around you. All right. Remember seeing in a video one time on shamanism, and the narrator said that in the Western world, we tend to see the world out there. But the shaman feels the world around him or her, right? Wants to feel the world around him. That's how they kind of interact with the world. That is the intuitive way, is shifting into that receptive mode. 
Now the thing is, is that we need both minds. <laughs> you know, we shouldn't uh, do a, a form of um, lobotomy on ourselves and kind of throw away the logical mind, nor should we throw away the intuitive mind, which is sort of what the modern Western emphasis on science alone has in, and science and reason alone bringing us the truth about things. That's what's happened there. We sort of dismissed the whole realm of the imaginative, intuitive, the arts right and have put on a pedestal the superiority of science and reason to determine truth to guide us in life and uh, basically to direct western society so we've been suffering for that we've been suffering in many ways so let's not do that we need both minds and how it works is that the logical mind can kind of put forth the intentions all right it's sort of the director the ceo the one who's running the ship captain of the ship and can put forth the request for information guidance input um, is good at creating plans and strategies but yet needs some inspiration for that so then you go to the intuitive mind right which also very much connected with the subconscious mind to go to work to get the information that we need um, to pick up that information to bring that guidance that inspiration and whatnot and bring that forth to the table all right and then the logical mind will take a look at it assess evaluate and create the plan to apply it <laughs> and then in a sense too is where the logical mind will then say okay subconscious intuitive self here is the plan go to work and let's put this into action and this is where you can go a step further in terms of programming the subconscious mind to support the intentions the plan that you want to manifest this is where we're now going into manifestation and whatnot, which I'm not dealing with so much here in this program, but I do in other programs. Um, but this is sort of how it works. We need both minds here and be aware of what's doing what, okay, and how they kind of work together. So to sum up here, my kind of basic working model here in terms of how I see intuition is that intuition largely works through our bodies where our bodies are like an antenna that can pick up the energy from the surrounding environment all right and that energy that can gets translated into sensations feelings imagery words various things that we can call internal cues and I'll go more into this in the next uh, lecture then the universe also communicates to us through symbols and synchronicities, patterns, all right, where there are messages in the lining up of energy to create meaningful events and synchronicities that also then is in a sense an answer to our quest for guidance. And these are external cues. So we need to be aware of what's going out there in the universe, these external cues, and also be able to tune in to the internal cues and messages that we're getting. All right? And this is how intuition comes to us. So we'll go into all this more deeply in the next lectures. All right. See you there.